Hi guys, my name is Anika and this is 8th grade science with Alstom. Today's video covers the first life science standard for 8th grade science, structures and functions of living organisms. We'll discuss things like viruses, bacteria, parasites, fungi, epidemics, pandemics, and biotechnology. Every question in this video is timestamped. If you get a question right, you can skip the explanation by going to the next timestamp. For extra review after the video, go to our links for further reference page. This page has resources for every question in the video. It's linked in the description box. Okay, with all that being said, let's get into the first question. Question one, what is the branch of science that deals with microscopic organisms? Some examples of these organisms include bacteria, protozoa, parasites, and some fungi and algae. A, zoology, B, genetics, C, molecular biology, D, microbiology. The answer is D, microbiology. So the organisms listed in this question are bacteria, protozoa, parasites, and some fungi and algae. What qualities qualify these organisms as the microscopic organisms studied in microbiology? So there's three specific qualities that each of these organisms needs to have. The first quality is no tissue differentiation. This means that there aren't any specialized cells in these organisms. Specialized cells are cells designed for one particular function in an organism. For example, in humans, we have something called nerve cells, aka neurons, which are cells with the specific function of transmitting messages in the body. In the organisms listed here, they don't have specialized cells, which means they only have one type of cell that does many different functions. The second quality that these organisms have to have is that they're unicellular. But the important thing to note in this question is that it specifically says some fungi and algae, because fungi and algae are typically multicellular organisms. So only some fungi and algae go into microbiology. And the last quality that they need to have are that they are very diverse in shape and size. And that makes sense because there's many different types of bacteria, protozoa, parasites, and fungi and algae. So obviously these different types are gonna be diverse in shape and size. Question two, label the following rows in the table with either parasite, bacteria, virus, or fungi. Go ahead and pause the video here so you can take time to read the table. Okay, so the answers to this question are these over here. The first row is virus, second bacteria, third fungi, and fourth parasite. So if you got that right, go ahead and skip to the next question. Otherwise, let's talk about how we figure out which of these rows is which of these microorganisms. So the first one here is virus, and the key words for the virus are this section here, a nucleic acid surrounded by a protein coat. This is important. This is the structure of a virus. So this description here is specific only to viruses. So that's how you would know that this category is virus. You could also look at the part that says how it's treated because it says the best method of prevention for these microorganisms are vaccines and vaccines only treat viral infections. So based on these two things that are specific to only viruses, you know that this first row is virus. The second row is bacteria. So the first thing we know is that bacteria are single-celled. They do reproduce asexually. But the big thing that makes us know that this is specific to only bacteria is that it says antibiotics are used to treat this because antibiotics can only treat bacterial infections. The third row is about fungi. And the biggest thing we know here is that fungi are typically multicellular, whereas these other things are usually unicellular. And also you can use the words fungal infections and antifungal creams over here. And the last one is parasite. Parasites are organisms that feed on other organisms. The big word that goes with parasite is host because that's the organism a parasite feeds on. 
So when you see the word host, you should usually think of parasites. What's really important to know about these is how they are transmitted and how they are treated, because that, those are the factors that affect how these microorganisms cause disease in the human body. Question three, the flu and the common cold are two diseases caused by which type of pathogen? A, virus, B, bacteria, C, fungi, D, parasite. The answer is A, virus. One way to think about this question is that many people take the flu vaccine every year. Vaccines are only for viruses. They only treat viruses. You can remember this because V for vaccine and V for virus. Question four, true or false, most parasites kill their hosts. The answer is false. If a parasite needs its host to live and to feed off of, why would it purposefully kill it? Unfortunately, sometimes hosts die when parasites feed so much and cause them to become sick. Then the parasites move to another host. Question five. Strep throat is a common bacterial infection. What do doctors typically use to treat it? The answer is antibiotics. So the key word in this question is bacterial. Antibiotics can only treat bacterial infections. Question six, go ahead and read this paragraph and then fill in the blanks. All of the blanks are the same word. You're probably gonna need to pause the video here. The answer to this question is outbreak. So the paragraph is gonna read, a disease outbreak happens when a disease occurs in greater numbers than expected in a community or region or during a season. An outbreak may occur in one community or even extend to several countries. It can last from days to years. Sometimes a single case of a contagious disease is considered an outbreak. This may be true if it is an unknown disease, is new to a community, or has been absent from a population for a long time. Question seven, what are the two types of disease outbreaks? The answers are epidemics and pandemics. Question eight, name the difference between epidemics and pandemics. The answer is, pandemics stretch over a much more widespread area, typically global. The exact definitions of epidemic and pandemic are epidemic, a disease that affects a large number of people within a community, population, or region. Pandemic, an epidemic that has spread to multiple countries or continents across the world. An easy way to remember it is the P in pandemic stands for passport because pandemics typically go across the globe. Question nine, is COVID-19 classified as a pandemic or an epidemic? The answer is pandemic. While it may have started as an epidemic, COVID-19 reached all over the globe. This makes it a pandemic. Question 10. Let's call a certain viral infection, infection A. Infection A became a pandemic. Which of the following is a good method of slowing down infection A? A, antibiotics, B, vaccines, C, Tylenol, D, there aren't any ways to slow down this type of infection.
The answer is B, vaccines. Once again, the key word here is viral. Viral infections are prevented or made less intense by vaccines. If many people got vaccinated, the virus would have less people to fully infect, and therefore it would start dying out. Question 11. Which of the following is an example of biotechnology? A. Using corn to make fuel. B. Using water to generate power. C. Using rocks for building material. D. Extracting oil from the ground. The answer is A, using corn to make fuel. Corn is a living organism. We use it to make ethanol, which is a type of fuel. This is the use of a living organism to make a useful product, which is a definition of biotechnology. Question 12. Biotechnology is A, the use of natural resources to solve problems and make useful products. B, the use of living organisms to solve problems and make useful products. C, the use of non-living organisms to solve problems and make useful products. The answer to this question is B, the use of living organisms to solve problems and make useful products. Question 13. Which of the following is not a reason why farmers would want to apply agricultural biotechnology? A, to produce crops that are more resistant to disease. B, to allow farmers to grow more food on less land using environmentally sustainable practices. C, to stabilize crop yield. D, to increase insecticide resistance. The answer is D, to increase insecticide resistance. The first three answer choices are all benefits of agricultural bio biotechnology. These are all good things for the farmers. However, farmers do not want to increase insecticide resistance. This means that insects would become resistant to the insecticides in crops modified by biotechnology. This is a possible downside of biotechnology use in agriculture. I hope this video helped you review this standard. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments. Like, share, and subscribe if this video helped you out. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.